Hey guys, welcome back for another video. So today I've got a review and I'm going to show you all about the new Fantic X9 air inflator. This is a portable battery operated tire inflator. I'm going to specifically go over a few things that are important to us motorcycle riders. And of course it does cars and everything else. Now I'm going to go over its basic features. And I'm also going to be comparing it directly to the X8. It's not replacing the X8. It's just the first of the new generations. And we'll talk about some of those changes here and we'll see which one you may want to keep in your kit because these two are both really similar, but they do have some additional models coming, but these are designed to basically be think of them as old and new generation, but they're still currently both sold. So you can, Make up your mind if you are looking for something like this between the two based on what I'm going to show you. So first of all, in the box, box here, we get the install instructions, not the install instructions, the operating instructions, pretty dead simple. We've got different adapters for the end of the hose so we can connect to any type of valve or toy that we need to, a USB charging cable and a handy little, oh, kind of rubberized cloth, very durable carrying pouch. Now this is cool if you want to throw it in your motorcycle for your pack of goodies. Now we can see that it is very compact. It's not too heavy. It is a very large battery. We've got enough runtime on this to do multiple full inflations of car tires. So you do not ever have to worry about not having enough juice to blow up multiple motorcycle tires from completely flat. So no worries about that. For normal top off op operation, doing all my testing on this, on my cars and motorcycle, I can't get the battery gauge to budge for normal top off use. So if I'm doing from completely flat, you know, I had to patch a tire or I had a new tire had to put on in the field or something like that, not that that would likely happen, but you don't have to worry about it. This thing just has endless battery life, even though this battery is slightly smaller than the X8. It has a new pump. It's a lot more efficient. It's a little quieter, not too much. I'm not going to call this a quiet thing, but if you're used to any kind of portable 12 volt pump right along the same lines, volume wise, and just a little bit quieter than the X8, but unless you had them side by side, you wouldn't know, but it's quick. It does inflate a little bit faster. It's not day and night, but it's noticeable compared to the X8. So they did improve the efficiency of the pump. They were able to shrink the battery, save a little bit of size and weight, and still give you the exceptional performance. Plenty of venting on the sides. The housing never gets hot. That's an issue with a couple of the uh, cheaper, like Ryobi brand, 12 volt, older inflators I had, man, those things would overheat like the Dickens and you would have to actually stop and let the internals cool because the pistons inside were sometimes plastic and you could melt them. So what we have is you'll notice this little loop here. That is the entire inflation tube. It's not detachable. At least I don't think it is. Anyway, you just pull this out and the unit pulls on. Now you can, of course, turn it on and off manually by the button. If you don't want to, for some reason, put this back in there. No, that is not removable. So you just pop it in and out. It'll turn on and off. I do like this design where it captures it because it keeps it more compact and you don't have to attach and detach a tube if you want to put it back in your bag. So it's just very quick and easy and you don't have to worry about, oops, did I accidentally turn that on or off? It's, already locked in there. So you throw it back in your bag and you're good to go. So the display, and by the way, I'll link down to the X8 review because I went into great detail about that. And you'll see some of these comparisons side by side. Actually, I can just turn it on and show you this real quick. I didn't really intend for this to be a comparison video, but it's here. And I think this is important information or at least useful information. So you can see the displays are a bit different. It looks more different on camera. I'm looking at my screen up here and I'm looking at this obviously. In real life, these are the same brightness. The camera makes this look just a little dimmer. It's not, don't worry about that. But you can see that this is a dot matrix kind of segment display and these are solid segments. This looks like a nicer display. Just a minor quibble, makes absolutely no difference to the function, however. Um, we've got a battery gauge up here. The battery gauge here, I think it only comes on, I'm trying to remember when I was using it. 
oh no, that's right. They switched it to this light. I was just, I'm been going back and forth between these. So a couple of the, the changes are very different. This little LED here, when you charge it, it changes colors and it's basically not too useful compared to this. You've got this nice gauge on here. This is basically empty or full. I, they say it goes between 50% and hundred and it's white. And then when it reaches near empty, it switches to amber. To me, that's not very useful because you could be half full and it looks the same as full. So I like this a lot better. I wish they would have stuck with this kind of gauge. But again, it has a huge battery life. So if you just top it off before a trip or whatever, you know you're gonna be good. But minor point there, the display itself, you can see that you can cycle through. They still have the presets. You, you have a manual where you can adjust the pressure that you wanna to go to just by pressing it up and down. And then you've got these little symbols. That's supposed to be a bicycle. I guess that's a scooter, a car, and a ball. They operate the same, all four positions, or all five positions, actually. The four preset positions, you can just save pressures to, so you don't have to tap it up and down every time you wanna to switch to something else. I gave them some feedback. I wish they would just go one, two, three, four. It makes no sense to have specific symbols. I mean, it makes you think that, oh, it can only be used for this, or that can only be used for that. It just doesn't make any sense. So just change that to one, two, three, four. That's all you have to do is think about that as presets, right? So no big deal there. We have pressure either in PSI or BAR shows over here. And that's a little bit of improvement. They had a third selection on the X8. It wasn't very useful to us in the US. So that's cool. And you just tap the center button there to start and stop it. When it reaches whatever preset number you've set to, it automatically shuts off. And I did test it just like I did the X8. It is accurate, same as my internal sensors on my car. So I like that. Now, when I set these two, I've, I've got them all set up on my X8. I just use the presets for uh, one and two are my front and rear on my motorcycle because they're different pressures. And then three and four are different pressures for my front and rear on my car. So it does make it very cool to have those presets and never have to worry about tapping it up or down and just connect it, do your top off and good to go. Now that brings me to one motorcycle specific thing that I don't like about this. And I wasn't really crazy about it on the X8 and they made it a little worse. And that's the length of these lines. They made it even shorter. And if you watch my X8, you'll see that it's kind of a pain in the butt to get in a motorcycle wheel and connect this and screw it down as it is. It's a very solid connection. This piece here does not freely spin. It's got a lot of resistance and it doesn't leak while you're connecting it. So that's, that's very good. But this thing is short, man. My valve is in the center of my wheels and they're thick and there's just no room. You, you end up having to hold this right down at your wheel and get your hands in there and connect it. This is even harder because it's shorter. It's freer spinning, so it's a lot easier to connect but you just have no room left. Like I said in the X8 video, I don't know if the length of this is short because it makes it more accurate. I assume that's kind of why they're doing it, but it would be nice if we had an optional extender or an optional longer tube for motorcycles. For cars, no problem whatsoever. It's not very comfortable because you do have to have this obviously right down at the tire. I've got other handheld pumps with a nice long, you know, three foot, two foot connection tube, and I can stand up and have it in my hand while it's inflating. This, I have to actually get down on a knee. So a little less convenient, but of course these are made for emergency use and in a pinch. So not that huge of a deal again. The other thing that's different on this that I think is a real downgrade specifically from the X8 is the included light. Now, what they went to is just one tiny little LED. It is virtually useless. This thing is so wimpy, you can, fly, you can go between on and SOS or just flashing, yes, yeah, SOS and off. It's so wimpy that it's barely good enough if you're in pitch black to use to find the valve. 
that's really it. I mean, it, it barely casts a shadow over the tube on a wall. Whereas the X8 is huge. Let me turn this guy on here. This is a true flashlight, all right? This lights the ground when you're walking. <laughs> it's not even remotely close in luminance. So they did take a step backwards there. Personally, I think they just should have left the light off because it's just not a functional feature. They probably left it off so that they could reuse some parts and circuits. And they've got the little light imprint on the switch here but it was clearly an afterthought. Now maybe the next model's coming, we'll go back to a good light. That's kind of what I assume. Uh, the other thing is, and this is something cool that I confirmed with them, I said, this is such a huge battery. You just don't use the capacity in normal use. I mean, it's a good thing, but it's such a wasted opportunity. Why don't you make it a battery bank? Because having one of these in your vehicle and needing to charge a phone or a tablet or whatever, I mean, this can be a fast charger. Not only a fast charger, but I mean, this could charge your full-size iPad Pro a couple times. That's how big the battery is in here. But this is only a charging USB port. Now they do have an older model. It's kind of the, the top of the line. Hey, look at that. <laughs> I haven't charged this since I got it, since I did the original tests. So I don't know how many months that's been, but I finally got the battery gauge to go down. You guys saw it. Anyway, uh, they do have an older, more top of the line model. And I'm assuming they're coming out with a better top of the line model for the 9 series. But the, I can't remember the name of it, but the top of the line 8 family line model has a built-in out. So it is a battery bank. So I wasn't the first to think of that, but I'm glad that they actually have that coming. So that'll be nice. But if you're looking for just a general purpose thing, again, forget it has the light. Not so much a, I'm gonna use it every day on my motorcycle, but definitely in a pinch. And decent for a car, no problem there. Tons of pump life, super easy to use, very accurate, relatively quiet and fast. This is gonna be a good bet. Now, if you wanna spend a little bit more, and the prices, I mean, they're within a couple bucks right now on Amazon, I'll put links down below. And I do have a, at least a temporary discount code for you for the nine that I'll also put down below. I don't know when it's gonna end, but you can save some cash off that. I mean, they're close. They're not like, oh, this one's 30 bucks more or anything like that. So definitely check out the Amazon coupon codes whenever, whenever you're watching this video before you make a pur purchase decision, if you're kind of going back and forth, like seriously, for normal use, just throwing in your bag, either one is going to be a really good fit. So kind of shot by price, unless one of these features is a deal breaker for you. So that's it, hope it helps. See you next time.